we're back. We got some more Kanehurst Castle stuff. And we're gonna go straight into it again. The box has been opened before, but I'm using the same footage, sue me. We're gonna jump straight in with the blood liquor, which is this little big bellied long haired creature that licks blood. And again, we're starting off. We've got the clean water. We've got the dirty water. We've got the kitchen roll. We've got the wet palette with the horrible sponge that does need to be replaced. Please don't tell me off over it. I know I need to replace it. I just haven't yet. <sighs> We've got the wet palette sheet going on top. We've got the card that's getting rid of the wrinkles spreading out so it's nice and flat so that the paint doesn't build up in areas and is nice and even. Yes, we do have the blood liquor today and we're going to start off like how we started off all the other ones, priming it black and then getting ready for a zenithal highlight. So putting down the gross old mat that I have and it's covered in paint, getting some thinner, getting some cleaner. These are the two main things that you need when you're doing some airbrushing and drop some thinner in, drop some ink in. You can use acrylics, you can use whatever, as long as it can flow through an airbrush and can give you highlights. And onto a makeshift handle, which is a cork and some blue tack. I'll pop the model on and I can start highlighting from a high up angle, making sure I'm targeting the top areas, making them brighter, falling off into the nice dark areas and keeping the undersides nice and dark so that we get this sick looking contrast. First up, we've got Skeleton Horde Contrast yet again. I love this contrast paint. And I'm just gonna coat pretty much the entire body in this stuff. Starting off with a lighter contrast paint means that we have the ability to darken them with darker ones. You know, it's harder to add light to dark. It's easier to add dark to light. What does that say about society? I don't know, but that's just the way life is. So, yeah, pretty much just coating the whole body with Skeleton Horde contrast paint, keeping it nice and thin with some contrast medium or some water so that it sinks nicely into all the recesses, wrinkles and textures and details, but also it reacts nicely to the zenithal contrast underneath, keeping the darks, keeping the lights within the color. Then I can take some of this Blood Angels red contrast paint and I can use that to paint the horrible sack, blood sack. Is that what you want to call it? This, this horrible sort of protruding belly underneath. I want to keep it relatively not thinned down because I want that sort of vibrant redness on it. It will still react nicely to the contrast underneath and the darkness because red is a very powerful pigment. Just be careful not to go over the body too much with it. And yeah, you'll have this wonderful vibrant blood sack underneath. Then I'll do the same, I'll whip it onto this sort of whippy whippy tongue. And yeah, that's looking pretty horrible already. So then I can take some Basilicanum Grey, which will be the hair colour. And again, I don't want to thin it down too much because I like the sort of darkness of it and it will react quite well to the lightness of the Zenithal highlight underneath. And then I can just add some Skeleton Horde Contrast to the face because I forgot to do that. Some Mechanica Standard Grey or any other grey really you can use to base the stone that is standing on underneath. You know, this isn't the guide, this is just what I do. It could be a quite nice reference if you want some ideas of how to paint yours. You can use whatever to paint yours, it doesn't matter. You can, you can paint them vibrant green if you want. You can paint it blue, who cares? Do what you want. But anyway, we've got some Rakarth flesh, thin it down quite nicely, and I'll use this as the sort of like main mid highlight tone, I guess you want to call it, which will go over the sort of top areas of the skin, just sort of like building out those areas where the contrast like hasn't done quite what I want it to. And it will just give us some brighter tones, some different like sort of like texture, color onto the contrast that's underneath, which is quite nice. Like these two colors work quite well together, I find. So yeah, it works as a quite nice like complementary base. Pretty grimy, pretty gross, especially with the zenithal highlight underneath. I think it works quite well. Then I can just start highlighting more and more and more, adding some Corax white into the mix and basically just targeting higher up areas, thinner areas within the previous color that I did so that we're sort of getting that nice blend between the dark prime underneath through to the skeleton horde contrast, through to the Rakarth flesh, and then up into the sort of white mixed Rakarth flesh highlights, just really bringing out those highlight points and creating that contrast. That's the basic idea behind what I am doing and what I'm gonna be doing for however long. 
So yeah, it's pretty much all the sort of like middle points of the muscles and the sort of higher points on the backs that will get the brightest highlight. And then I'll just keep adding in more and more white into the mix until we get the brightest point, which is pretty much close to a perfect, like pure white onto it. You don't want too bright because otherwise it looks a bit wacky. But you know, bright enough that it is noticeably brighter within the highlight is the idea. Then I'll do the same with the hair, same theory behind it, taking some sort of like Ishin grey, Mechanica standard grey, whatever sort of like standard mid-tone grey that you have, work in some different strands into the hair and then work in some white into that mix and slowly start bringing up brighter and brighter highlights. Then onto the horrible blood sack, I'd need a better word for that, blood bag. On this underside, I'm going to take some Bugman's Glow and I'll just start targeting the higher areas of that because it's this nice sort of like dark pinky kind of colour and it'll blend quite nicely into the sack bag. I can't remember what I called it. Bag. And then same again with the tongue. I'm just going to highlight it with some uh, more Bugman's Glow to the brighter points. Then I'm going to take a sort of black wash and I'm going to kind of blend it into those tones just sort of on that sort of under underside bit that's like close to the body so it kind of like separates it nicely from the body just creating a bit of shadow between the two and breaking that up a tad yeah and then the next color is some rat skin flesh it's always good when the camera's not in focus but pfft, it's just autofocus and oh yes this is some rat skin flesh which is a sort of dark orangey fleshy kind of color and I'm just going to use that for a couple of different highlights and areas on the blood bag, just targeting those sort of like middle regions that are standing out the most to bring it away from the sort of darker contrast underneath. Then I can take some Mephiston red, which is a more vibrant red, and just start placing that around different areas just to sort of give it a bit more bloody look to it. And then that's the main body of it done. So then I can just take some Longbeard Grey, which is a nice dry white paint, and I can just start dry brushing that onto the rock underneath just to give a couple extra highlights and stuff. And then all that's left to do is just then paint the base black so that it's nice and clean, ready to have on the board game. And that is a, another one done. That is the blood liquor from the Canehurst Castle. If you did enjoy today's episode, please be sure to drop it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, drop a comment below. And yeah, if you want to support the channel in extracurricular ways, if you're so inclined, be sure to check out my Patreon. The link is on the screen. If you want to join this lovely host of wonderful people that already support the channel, that would be absolutely wonderful, but no pressure, you don't have to. You can just watch the videos and enjoy if you like. And yet another reminder to drop it a like and subscribe because we do have lots more Bloodborne content coming your way. If you are interested in painting your own Bloodborne minis, if you do have the board game and haven't started already, I know a lot of people have sent me messages saying that these videos are really helpful just because it's sort of a bit of motivation to start painting their own minis that they have lying around. I always find it's much more enjoyable to play a board game that has painted minis rather than unpainted minis, but you know, each to their own. But that's enough rambling from me. I'm going to sign out now and thanks very much for joining me. I'll see you next time for some more Bloodborne board game content. Doodaloo!